This is Coding Math, Episode 6, Vectors, Part 1. So I wanted to start a series of videos on basic physics, stuff like velocity, acceleration, springs, easing, etc. But as I started preparing the first video, I realized that I was going to have to spend a lot of time explaining vectors. So I figured I'd just break that subject out into its own video. But then when I started preparing that video, I realized that that was going to be really long as well. So I've broken it down a little bit more, and this video will be the theory behind vectors, and in the next video I'll cover writing a basic vector class in JavaScript. Now a vector is a quantity that encapsulates two values, magnitude and direction. A vector is usually graphically represented as an arrow like this. We'll stick to 2D vectors in this video, though you can definitely have 3D vectors and vectors of even higher dimensions. This end of the vector is called the tail, and this is the head. The direction is simply the angle that the arrow is pointing in, usually in degrees or radians. The magnitude of the vector is the length of the arrow. So that's one way to represent a vector, direction and magnitude. In other words, angle and length. Now the head and the tail are both points. If the tail is point A and the head is point B, then we can refer to this vector like so, AB with an arrow over it. Additionally, if we consider that the tail of this vector is positioned at 0, 0, or the origin of the coordinate space, then we can refer to the vector as 0B with the arrow on top, or more simply just B with the arrow. Now this leads to another way of specifying a vector, probably the most common, by a pair of XY values. These values represent the position of the head point, considering that the tail is 0, 0. So, if point B were located at position 7, 4, you could call this vector v and say v equals 7, 4. Later we'll see how we can convert a vector back and forth between these two representations using the same trig functions we covered in earlier videos. Now we can use vectors to represent many different things. For example, position. Now in the case of position, the magnitude of the vector actually represents distance. So we could say that point b here is so many units from the origin at such and such an angle. And of course we could also use an xy point to describe an object's position, which, as we've just seen, is another way of representing a vector. Then there's velocity. For velocity, the magnitude would represent speed, and the direction would represent the heading or the angle at which the object is moving. In other words, it shows you that an object is going in this direction at so many miles per hour, or kilometers per second, or pixels per frame, or whatever. The faster the speed, the longer the arrow. In the same way, you could break that down into a pair of xy values that would represent the relative velocity on the x and y axes. You can also use vectors to represent acceleration or force, or anything where you need to represent direction and submagnitude. I'll cover some of these in future videos. Now, let's talk about the operations that you can perform on vectors. First, of course, you can add them together. To add two or more vectors, you simply place them head to tail in any order and then you draw a vector from the first tail to the last head. So you have one vector like this, and then another like this, and a third like this. You can draw them head to tail like so, and then draw a final vector from the start to the finish like this, and that is the result of adding these three vectors. Now one way to look at this is in terms of position. If you started here and walked in this direction so far, and then walked in this direction for this distance, and then this direction this far. It's really the same as if you had just started here and walked this direction this distance. Another example would be adding up forces. Say you had a three-way tug of war. You have an object in the center with a force this strong pulling the object in this direction. Then you add another force this strong pulling the object in this direction, and a third force pulling it in this direction. So you want to know what the equivalent single force is. Well, you just add them all up by putting these three vectors head to tail. And you get a vector like this, which is the sum of these three vectors and the resultant force on this object. Note again that it doesn't matter which order you add the vectors, the result is always the same. Now earlier I said that a vector can be represented as either an angle in length or as an xy point. Now that we know how to add vectors, this gives you another way to look at it. Say you have a vector like this. You can represent this as the sum of two other vectors head to tail. You can make one of those vectors go this way along the x-axis, and then the next one go like this along the y-axis. 
So the sum of these two vectors is equal to the original vector. And the length of this vector happens to be the x position of the head point, and the length of this one is its y position. You should also be able to see that you now have a right triangle. And if you've watched the previous videos, you should be able to figure out how to convert between the two. The hypotenuse of the triangle is the magnitude of the original vector, and this angle A here is the direction of that original vector. So we can say that x equals the magnitude times the cosine of A, and y equals the magnitude times the sine of A. Likewise, if we know the x and y of a vector, and we want to know its magnitude and direction, we can use arctangent to get the angle, as I covered in video 5. And then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get the length. I'll cover both of these a bit more in the next video. Now this ability to convert becomes particularly important in coding. When you're positioning objects on the screen or deciding how fast to move them, you need to use xy values. But you might only know the angle and speed. For example, in a game, say you had a spaceship and the user rotates the ship to a certain angle and then a certain amount of force is applied. Well, you'll need to know how to convert that angle and force into values that represent how far to move the ship on the x and y axes and the final x and y positions to place it. Now getting back to addition for a moment, mathematically addition is done most easily just by adding the x and y components of the two vectors. If we have v1 here, which is 7, 4, and v2, which is 2, 3, the result of adding them together is simply 7 plus 2 and 4 plus 3 or 9, 7. Vector subtraction is just as easy. To subtract one vector from another, position the heads of the vectors together and draw a vector from the tail of the first to the tail of the second. Mathematically, to subtract, you just subtract the x and y components. Again, if v1 is 7, 4 and v2 is 2, 3, subtracting these will give you a vector of 5, 1. Finally, there's multiplication and division. Now there are a few ways to look at multiplication of vectors. One is the multiplication of vectors by other vectors. This results in operations we call the dot product and the cross product, which I'll save for other videos. The simpler form is called scalar multiplication, which multiplies a vector by a single scalar value. And a scalar value is just another name for a real number, such as 1, or minus 2, or 3.14. In scalar multiplication of vectors, what you are multiplying is the length or magnitude of the vector. If a vector has a magnitude of 10, multiplying it by 2 gives you a new vector with a magnitude of 20. The angle stays the same. If you are representing the vector by an xy pair, you can also simply multiply both of those by the scalar. You can see that the result is that you are actually scaling the vector, which is probably why they call it scalar multiplication. Division is the same concept. If you have a vector of magnitude 10, dividing it by 2 gives you a new vector with magnitude 5. So that's the basics of what vectors are and some of the operations you can do with them. I'll be back soon with another video in which we'll code up a basic vector class in JavaScript that will allow you to create vectors and perform all the operations we've covered here today. And once we're done with that, we can use that class to start exploring some physics concepts. See you soon.